Hey, this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. So this week we have a drop D blues. So that's where you take your E string, your low E string, and you drop it down to a D. It's really easy to do, and it gives you a whole new set of options. It's a great way to play uh, a slow blues like this. So we're going to break this down note for note. I'll show you how to play everything over the course of two videos. In this video, we're going to take a look at the first half. If you'd like to learn the second half and get the tablature for this, as well as I have the access to the on-screen tab viewer, which is interactive. You can get those things by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page, and do a search for EP354. All right, so for those of you that are in the creative process, you're trying to write a, you know, an instrumental song, or maybe you're a singer-songwriter, and you're trying to come up with chords, or some kind of guitar part, and you're hitting a brick wall, one of the things you can do is change the tuning of your guitar. And I do this quite often. Uh, sometimes I'll go into open chord tuning or maybe dad gad tuning or my favorite which is drop D tuning I like it because you're changing one variable and in it it's first of all it's very quick to get into to drop D tuning I like that but then all, everything else stays the same so if you want to take a lead break or something no problem all your, your other strings are the same but just by changing that one variable it changes everything it gives you a whole a bunch of new ideas that you can uh, come up with and so I was going to play this on electric guitar when I was writing it. I wrote it on acoustic, but I thought, you know, this will be great on electric with a little overdrive, some tremolo. But then the more I played it on acoustic, I thought, you know, it's going to it sounds great either way. So I just wanted to mention that if you've got only got electric guitar, you can play this and it's going to sound good that way as well. So, uh, the first thing that I played, and this, this song is in the key of D, and by the way, I should mention this, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about with drop D tuning, it just means you take your E string, your bottom E string, and you drop it down until it matches the note from your open fourth string. So you play your open fourth string, which is a D, and then you drop that down until you hear the two Ds match. And you can do that by ear that quick. I mean, it's super fast. If you can't do that by ear, you can use a tuner. Uh, but that's all drop D tuning is. And the cool thing about drop D, once you're in that, is check this out. If I play string six, five, and four, that's a D power chord. That's a D five chord. So now I've got my one chord, my four chord, and my five chord. And look at that. I'm just using one finger to play a bar there. So it's. Um, so that would be my G chord, and that would be my A chord, D, G, A. So when it comes to blues, that's a very cool thing to have, is just to be able to use one finger to, on those bottom strings. It makes it very easy to play blues, and then you can come in and throw in some fillings. So we're going to do this real dark blues uh, in this key. And the first thing that I played was actually... This little intro part, I thought it needed an intro. It just didn't seem right to jump right into chords. But I went into this part that sounds something like that. Now, I cut that out of this video, and I've put that in a separate video, just that intro for premium members. I just thought that the timing of it sounded, it was, it was kind of weird because it doesn't uh, fit into a normal sort of click track and so I left that it's got its own tab It's his own little uh, video for that. So we're cutting that out, but we're gonna go through everything else in this video So now that you're in drop D tuning the first thing that uh, we're gonna do is we're gonna make a D chord uh, With a left hand, but we're not gonna use the middle finger the reason I take that middle finger off is so I can do Do these little you know fills and things which you can easily do when you're in drop D tuning. So the way that I'm strumming that goes like this. And 
It's down, 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 up, down. That's where I put my middle finger down on the third fret, fifth string. Up, and then down, 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 down. And uh, if you're a premium member, you can follow along in the tab and, uh, and follow it that way. That's probably the easiest way to do it. But that's what's going on there. Just over and over again. Practice that first. Um, okay, so that's the first thing that happens. Now, after that, I go right into a lead part that goes, or it's really a, a fill lick. Now, what is that? The way that I played all the lead break stuff was I stayed in the key of the song. So I'm not trying to change scales to match the chords. So as we go over the G chord, I'm not trying to play it like a G major scale or anything. Everything that I play is D minor pentatonic scale. So if you know your minor pentatonic scale, which is just five notes, you can play all this stuff. I'm staying in the key of the song. So, so think of this as your call. And then the response is... Now what I'm doing there is I've got my ring finger up here on the 7th fret 4th uh, string, my index finger is on the 5th fret 3rd string, and I'm sliding into that, then I hit the open D string, and then I play that again. So it's like this, and there's an upstroke there. Now some of you are going, wait, what are these two notes? Like how is that, where is that coming from? That's just the, I'm thinking D minor pentatonic scale pattern 4. So pattern 4. That's where those two notes are coming from. The other way to think about that, if we play a D chord here using the A chord shape out of Caged, where my pinky is on that seventh fret, if I look at the third string, that's a D note. So hopefully a light bulb goes off for some of you and you think, okay, wait, if that's a C chord, that's a C note. And my point in that is, if I can put my middle finger where that note is, I'm right into like the heart of uh, minor pentatonic scale pattern four. That's that triangle, that little triangle shape that happens there. And so anyway, all of that's just say, connect pattern four of your minor pentatonic scale to this chord shape. You can get to it quickly that way. You can easily visualize it. So when I was playing this, I was thinking in my mind, where's the next D chord? Where's another D chord? Not the next, there is no next, but where's another one? Well, I know there's one here. Oh, there's also that minor pentatonic scale pattern four. And that's what I did. And then after that, I went. So look at all, it sounds like a lot of notes, but it's all in a little box here between the fifth fret and the third fret. So after that, we're going to slide down to the 5th fret 4th uh, string, 3rd fret 4th string, and then 5, 3, 5, 3, those are on the 5th string, and then we're going to walk it back up, 5, 3, 5, 3, so, alright, and then we go back into the call part. Same thing, right? So the, you start to see a pattern now. So you've got the call, and then the response to that. Back to the call. Now here's the next response. And then we go into the four chord, which is the, the G. So this, is still minor pentatonic scale pattern four. Right? I was just playing those two strings, which would be strings three and four on the seventh fret. Slide into him, hit the low uh, D string, and then go back to them. And then watch this. So that's fifth fret, third string, seventh fret, fourth string, 7th fret, 3rd string, so I use my ring finger to bar there on this 7th uh, fret. Back to the 5th fret, 3rd string, and then we go a slide, that's a quick slide from the 7th fret to the 5th fret on the 4th string. So, 
And now we're gonna stay in that little box like we were before. And so let's do that again. And then we go to the four chord. And what's nice is my index finger is on the third fret, fifth string. My ring finger comes down and bars. Just like I was showing you, you've got your one chord, your four chord, and your five chord, right? So my ring finger can come down and play the four chord. And that would be something that you couldn't do if you were in standard tuning. You couldn't just put your finger down and play the whole uh, chord like that. So. So once I play that, it's six string, and then we're gonna play strings six, five, and four, and strum just those three strings. Just like that. And then watch this. That's just a, a hammer-on that happens between the fifth fret and the seventh fret. I'm still in minor pentatonic scale pattern four for D, for the key of D. Even though we're playing over the G chord, I'm still in the key of the song. So that's five, seven, five, seven, or well, then five, back to seven on the fourth string, and then we go uh, five, seven on the third string. And then I do down, up, muted, just to keep the timing going. And after the down, up, muted, I go back to that uh, four chord, which is, again, it's just the bottom three strings, six, five, and four. And then I played walking up pattern four of that minor pentatonic scale for D. So it's, again, it's five and seven on the fourth string, five and seven on the third string, and then six fret second string. That's, that's part of that little triangle there. Now after that six fret second string, we're going to play 7, 5 on the 3rd string, and a slide from the 7th fret to the 5th fret on the 4th string, all the way down to the 3rd fret 4th string. Okay, so you have... And then you're in position to go back to your 1 chord. Let's back it up from the beginning and play up to that point. We'll play through it slowly. So we have... Back to the call. Right? The same call every time. So we're back to the one chord. Now watch this. Nice little fill lick. I love that. So that's three, two on the fourth string. Open fourth string, which is your D note. And then you're down to the third fret, fifth string. And then you're you come back to that open sixth string, which is your D note. So it sounds like this. I could do that all night. It's just very intoxicating to get into a little groove like that because your right hand just stays in motion, down, up, down, up. Great practice uh, technique as well. Okay, so after that, then I went to the, we're going to the five chord now. So to get to the five chord, there's that fill lick. So that's all happening on the third fret. So I'm on the third fret fourth string. So that's a downstroke. Then we do an upstroke on the open third string. Then we go back to the third fret fourth string, open fourth string, third fret fifth string, open fifth string. And that open fifth string is an A note, and then I come up here to the seventh fret and match that A note. So 
-hmm. Now, before we move on to the next part, this is a huge takeaway right here. Because when you're playing in drop D uh, tuning, this is my favorite area to do fills. Just like I like doing this one, I've also got the fourth string. So look at this. So play around with those open notes along with your D chord and you can get all kinds of cool ideas just from that. I could have you know, I could I could have made a whole lesson just about that and what you can do. Maybe that's a micro lesson for a future thing. Okay, so once we're to that open A, and then you come up to the seventh fret and play the sixth string, and then you're gonna play the bottom three strings of that. So that would be your A chord. Look at that nice little fill like that's going on there. Strumming, and then Pinky comes up to the tenth fret, fourth string, then comes off. Now you keep the bar the whole time there on the seventh fret. And then pinky goes down on the 10th fret, 5th string, and then you, you go back to that 4th uh, string, which is behind the bar on the 7th fret. So all together, that 5 chord sounds like this. Right? It's all just done with the pinky there. It's a nice little thing. Now, some of you are saying, well, what is that? Where are these notes coming from? That's just, that would be pattern 5 of the minor pentatonic scale for D. So you... Uh, your pattern one would be up here, pattern five, which is right behind pattern one. There's where those notes are coming from. Right? And then we're going to come down to the four chord. And then this final lick goes like this. Really cool. Very bluesy. I love that. So we're going to come from this fifth fret, the bottom three strings. And I play the beginning of that lick, which is the 7th fret, 4th string, 6th fret, 5th fret. So we have 7, 6, 5, down to 3, all on the 4th string. And then 5, 3 on the 5th string. And then we're going to slide from the 5th fret, 6th string, up to the 7th fret on the 6th string. And then play that D note there on the 5th fret, 5th string match the D note on the open 6th string. So it's just getting us back to that open 6th string. That's what that's really your goal in this. And so I should have mentioned that, but when you're when you're playing these lead fills, if you're improvising, just keep in mind the end note. It doesn't matter what you're doing to get there, but just know that you're trying to get to that so you can come back to the call. That should always be your goal. So you can throw in whatever fill like you want. As long as you can come back to that note and get back to the one chord you're fine okay so there's your fill to get back to the one and then the final thing that I played is just walking down and that couldn't be any easier because it's three two open we do that on the fourth string fifth string and the sixth string three two open Three, two, open. Three, two, open. So, and actually, I think that uh, in the intro I played, did a little bend there, a little country thing. You can do that if you want. Uh, but that's where I ended on on that chord, and that's sort of the end of the composition. Now, obviously, if you were playing this out somewhere, you want to keep the thing going, you could use the same call and response technique. Keep this the same if you wanted, but throw in other licks. You could steal licks from any of the, the patterns. Uh, as long as you stay in the key of D, you'll be fine. So that's the whole blues. I hope you've liked this, and I hope this is giving you some ideas for some things you can do in drop D tuning. Uh, I'm gonna back up and play through this one more time, and I should just mention, if you're not a premium member, you should look into it. It's very affordable. You'll have access to the tablature and um, the extra parts, like in this one there's that extra intro uh, that is for premium members. 
but there's there's hundreds and hundreds of lessons. I've been doing this for a decade now, and I've just got all, this huge back catalog. And I have access to all of that. Uh, so I always like to plug that. And the other thing is, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Click that alert bell. When I put out new lesson material, which I do weekly, uh, you'll be notified, and you'll you can stay in touch that way. All right, let me play through this one more time, and that'll wrap up this week's lesson. So here we go.